What is up, Finn fans? So today is the first day of rookie mini camps. Um, so I'm going to give you guys uh, Flores, obviously, talk to the media. I'm going to break down what he had to say to the media. Give you guys some tidbits on uh, jersey numbers if you guys really care. There's a University of Miami rookie running back. Uh, not a rookie running back, but a University of Miami running back uh, that was with the Bengals last year that is here trying out with the Dolphins. Talk about him real quick. And then, guys, give you a rough estimate of where the Dolphins' cap space is. Again, I don't know the uh, actual breakdown. Like, I know the breakdown of Xavier Howard's contract from yesterday, but I don't know, like, guarantees, and I don't know for each year. Let me let me just start talking about it. So we we know what Xavier Howard's contract looks like. It's five years, seventy six million. Forty six million is guaranteed. Fifty one million over the first three years, which is about seventeen million a year, right? So a lot of you guys wanted to know in yesterday's video uh, what where are we at in cap space right now. So I did some math because I tend to like to use over the cap, but they haven't updated their stuff because it literally just happened yesterday. Even if you try to look at the breakdown of Xavier Howard's contract within the five years, that's not even updated yet because it literally just happened yesterday. But in my understanding, in my math, in my brain and calculator, we had $37 million before we signed the rookies, before we signed Xavier Howard, and before we signed Jordan Mills, right? So with that being said, 37 million, right? Uh, the rookies cost about $8 million, so knock off $8 million. Xavier Howard's contract, it's $51 million for the first three years. So this year, I think it's going to cost about $17 million this year. Again, if I'm wrong, correct me. Totally down to be corrected. And then Jordan Mills, we signed him for one year, $3 million. Again, I don't know how much of his contract is guaranteed, but I'm assuming, you know, maybe half of it. But I just threw the whole $3 million in just so we can have an idea. So you take 37 minus 8 minus 17 minus 3, and we are at a whopping 9 million <laughs> under the cap right now. Uh, the Dolphins like to keep that 9 million under the cap, and they like to bring it. Um, but I, th I can see them waiting and to see for OTAs and uh, training camp to see if they need some more help at the edge rushers. I'll talk about that in a second when I go into what Flores had to say. Um, but right now they're at 9 million under the cap. So they went from 37 to 9. Again, a big chunk of that came from Xavier Howard's contract, which I think is um, well warranted, and he definitely deserved it. Um, as for next year, I think uh, we're not going to be at 120 million. I think we'll probably be around 90 to 100 million uh, with the cap cuts and all that stuff, maybe even around 80 million. But still, it's a lot of money to do a lot with. And then we also have the 12 uh, draft picks. So there's that. I'm going to tell you guys real quick what the rookies' numbers are. Now, these are drafted rookies, the undrafted free agent rookies, the 18 that we have brought in and signed. I don't know what their numbers are. If they make the team, then I'll understand what their numbers are. But as of right now, I don't know what their numbers are. We have Wilkins is wearing 97. We have Deirdre is wearing 63. We have Ginkle is wearing 43. Isaiah Prince, 79. Uh, Gaskins is 37 and Cox is 38, but the funny thing is Cox got drafted before Gaskins, but he's got the lower number, but I don't think that really matters. I just thought it was interesting. Uh, another fun fact, not really a fun fact, Deirdre, the third round pick, is the only drafted uh, player that has not signed his rookie contract yet. I don't know why he's waiting. I don't know what's going on, but he hasn't signed yet, um, but yeah. And then the UM running back, Mark Walton, who was with the Bengals last year, got cut, is here trying out with the Dolphins um, at the rookie minicamp. Uh, rookie minicamps are closed off to the media. So just to give you guys a heads up, with the OTAs, they're not closed off to the media. Neither is training camp. So I can really give you guys a breakdown of who did really well, some of the big plays, some of the bad plays, how people are performing. I can give you full breakdowns of the OTAs, which start Monday the 13th. Uh, but with rookie mini camps, it's just, you know, I'll give you guys the news and notes from what happened at rookie mini camp. Uh, so today you'll get a video and then Sunday you'll get a video of the full recap. Just wanted to give you guys a video today talking about what Brian Flores had to say. And let's jump right into that. It says Howard is a leader in the locker room, does a lot of things that are the core of what they see going forward. So they gave Xavier Howard the contract not only because 
of his play on the field, which is, again, well warranted. The dude is just a beast on the field. I gave you guys the stats and all that stuff in yesterday's video. Be sure to check out yesterday's video. But he came to minicamp. He came to the first day of workouts. He came, he, he just kept, he was like, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there, whatever. You guys will give me a contract. Or if not, you know, I'm still here and I'm still doing my thing. He has that right mentality and right attitude. And that's what the organization, organization, organization Jesus Doug, wants moving forward. Um, he says there's always room for improvement when he talks about Xavier Howard. He says we're on a quest for improvement. The whole team wants to improve. They're not going to be okay with an 8-8, eight 9-7. Eight, okay, we're in the pact. We have a chance to be in the wild card. Constant, constant improvement. He thanked the scouting department uh, for what they did with the draft. The scouting department doesn't really get a lot of uh, recognition when it comes to drafts and when it comes to the uh, organization. And a lot of times it's the GM and the head coach. You know, they get the Kyler Murray, they get the um, Baker Mayfield, they get the good players, uh, the number one players. And all of a sudden you see the GM and the head coach and the owner they're taking the pictures and the scout team never really gets the recognition to actually do the job, go to all these pro days, go to the combine, do their thing. So he wanted to thank the scouting department. I thought that was really big of him and really awesome of him of going out there and doing that. He says there's competition across the board. Everyone's competing. That's how you make this team better. That's how you make this team competitive. It's have the whole team compete. But if we're going to be honest, guys... Xavier Howard is not competing for the number one cornerback position if you're paying him $17 million a year. Um, neither is Laramie Tunsil. He is the left starting left tackle. You know, Rashad Jones is $15 million this year. He is not competing for that starting position. Mika Fitzpatrick, he's not start competing for a starting position. There's some players that aren't, but there's some players that in some positions that will be competing. Offensive line, defensive line, quarterback, uh, even running back. Don't be surprised about running back, second cornerback position, even linebackers. Everyone's gonna compete, except for the people that are making a buttload of money. Um, he says looking for leadership is the most important thing he's looking for in a quarterback. He wants that leader, take the, take the huddle, make sure everyone knows what they're doing, make sure everyone knows their routes, communication, all that stuff. Which, yeah, that's a very good, you know, leadership is a very good characteristic you want in the quarterback. But if you can't make throws, read the defense, or have pocket presence, then we're going to be stuck with poopy again. Not saying Ryan Tannehill's poopy. Because I said poopy again, I know you guys are going to be like, Ryan Tannehill's not poopy. Some of you guys. Some of you guys will be like, yeah, he's poopy. I'm going to breeze past that and keep going because it's going to start all the debate in the comment section. He says he's just fine with whoever wins the quarterback battle. If it's Fitz, it's Fitz. If it's uh, Rosen, it's Rosen. You know, again, I when I'm talking about quarterbacks, I'll say quarterbacks and then I'll say Fitz. And then when I'm talking about secondary and defense, then I'll say Fitz because I like calling them both Fitz. And you, you can take what you want from that. <clears throat> I got my notes here. I take a ton of notes for these videos. Make sure I'm informed so you guys can be informed. <laughs> Let's, Let's keep going. Um, he says, uh, he, I'm not, so they pressed him, right? They said to him, okay, say Rosen doesn't become the starter. Say Rosen, uh, sits on the bench. You know, how do you know what you have if you're not seeing him out there playing? How do you know? He said, we get to evaluate him, evaluate him every day in practice. So we get to see him play. We get to see him play against our defense. We get to see him do his thing. So just because he's not starting and just because he's not on the field doesn't mean we don't see him play. Um, he says on, on Wilkins, he says he needs to learn the playbook, earn the respect of his teammates, step on the field, and then they'll take it from there. I love that mentality because I said in a video maybe about three, four days ago, it drives me nuts. I think I might have even said in the live stream, <clears throat> it drives me nuts that people are already predicting uh, rookie awards, predicting who's going to have the book, best rookie season, predicting the 2020 draft. These rookies haven't even stepped on the field yet. So what Brian Flores is saying is, look, we can't let the guy learn the playbook, earn the respect, step on the field, and then we'll see what we have with Wilkins. They obviously know what they have with Wilkins because they drafted him, and then they have Hobby, the defensive line coach who worked with him in Clemson. But, like, give him a second. Let him hit the turf. Jesus. Um, he also said that Rosen is studying and trying to get all of the information in the playbook down as quick as possible. He's got about three days. I'm pretty sure he's got it down. Um, that's the one thing about Fitz 
Ryan Fitzpatrick that uh, a lot of people don't like give him the respect and understand is that dude went to Harvard. He got the highest Wonderlick score for quarterbacks. This dude knows how to read a defense. Like, that, there's a reason he's been in the league so long, and there's a reason that all these different teams have signed him. Yeah, he has his downsides where he uh, obviously isn't that great, so he has moved from team to team, but obviously he has the mentality and the smarts. So to have him and Rosen working together is going to be really good. I, I feel, I like that. He says he feels good about the defensive end position, which I don't feel good about the defensive end position, but he named, you know, Harris, Woodard. Um, he didn't say Ginkle, but... Ginkle will probably be that type of ed, uh, edge rusher outside linebacker position. Um, there's some other guys. you got the AAF players. And he, he says he feels good about the position, but I think he feels good about the position now before training camp and OTAs when he actually like sees them on the field. And then maybe he's like, oh, we need someone else. Go get me somebody else. So that's that. Uh, not a lot of teams know how to defend a two-back running game, he said. So expect Balage and Drake to sometimes in shotgun be back there with him also. It's that whole mentality that, you know, the revolving door and the, the, sorry about the motorcycle, the running back by committee, because you can't game plan for one running back. So you game plan for a Balage type running back, all of a sudden you stop Balage. all right, we'll throw Drake in there. We'll, we'll throw Pharaoh in there. We'll throw, you know, Gaskins in there. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, we didn't plan for him. It's hard. And that's what he's trying to say. Uh, he said we'll have a, a fullback on the team. We'll definitely have a fullback team. We're going to be a tough physical team. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, again, the things that Gase did sometimes worked, but I miss that physicality. Philman was the same thing. There's no physicality. We haven't had a physical football team since Tony Sprano. And when we had a physical football team like with Tony Sprano, we won the division. So I miss having that physical team where, okay, we're going to punch you in the face. We're going to come out here. We're going to run the ball. We're going to have our fullback knock you on your ass, and then we're going to get another 15 yards or our touchdown. So I'm really happy we're going back to that physical type thing. And then the final thing that he said is um, he challenges his players to ask why, and he challenges coaches to answer the why, which is you want your players to understand the scheme, understand why they're doing what they're doing so they know how to do it properly. You know, if you have the the DN, you know, not rushing and going back into zone, well, why do you want me to do that? And then he can explain, well, I'm going to have the linebacker come in behind you. You're going to have the, the uh, offensive tackle be un uh, confused that why aren't you rushing him, not knowing that the other guy's coming. Ask the questions why. Same thing with offense with screen plays you receiver well, why should i block on this one i'm on the opposite end of the field well this is why you know ask the questions why and then have the coach explain to them why so they can understand and do their job properly <clears throat> but that is what flores had to say that is my thoughts on what flores had to say be sure to comment below let me know what you guys think of what flores has to say uh let me know what you guys think of the numbers i don't think it really matters let me know what you guys think of the cap space we have left. Again, I don't know if it's if I'm 100% correct, but I think it's around $9 million, uh, that we have left after all the signings. Um, so comment below. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to get to one of you guys' uh, comments of the day real quick. Again, this is straight from the phone, so I can't pop it up anywhere. But it's at the bridge, and he says to me, it's the right move when talking about Xavier Howard. Overpaid probably, but that's inevitable. Xavier Howard is not yet a top five corner. Kind of disagree with that one, but I'm going to keep reading. He's certainly a top 10, he says, uh, but has the chance to become so. Injury, obviously a risk, but it's always a risk, which I agree. Uh, we need now, we now need something similar to for Tunsil. So I agree. I don't agree with him not yet being a top five corner. I think he already is a top five corner. I think that's why they paid him how he did, because if he was a top 10 corner, I think he wouldn't have made as much, but he's already top five corner. Seven interceptions last year, and he only didn't play a full season. I think he's a top five corner, but I do agree with Tunsil. Tunsil is the next guy who's probably going to get a contract extension. They don't want to wait on that and lose their star left tackle. Then after that will be Mika Fitzpatrick, who's... He had one year. He had ups and downs, but we'll see what he does this year. But I feel like, yeah, he's the next guy who will probably get that contract extension. But at the bridge, thank you so much for the comment. Again, be sure to comment below. Let me know what you guys think about what Flores had to say. The cap space, you know, yesterday was a crazy day. We had the back-to-back -back signings. Um, Xavier Howard signing blew everything out the water. 
but be sure to comment below. Um, I will, I'm making a video Sunday. Sunday's gonna be a full breakdown of exactly what happened during mini camp, all that stuff, because tomorrow I got a jam-packed day of a bunch of stuff I gotta do. So Sunday, you're gonna guys get a video of a mini camp recap, what happened during mini camp, and then Monday is OTAs, first day of OTA, so you guys are gonna get that OTA video where I break down everything. Um, but yeah, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm gonna retweet things if I, you know, if I can't make a video right away, I retweet things. I also retweeted some of the videos of people running out. Uh, so be sure to follow me on Twitter because there was a video of Cox running out of the, the revolving door and he kind of reminded me of Peyton Manning. He didn't move his torso when he was running. He kind of just like, so be sure to follow me on Twitter, check that video out. Be sure to check out the Bit Boys. I normally pop it right here. The Bit Boys or right here. Check them out. I'm playing Madden. We're gonna be doing a lot of uh, different things. We've got a lot of different games going on there. If you like that stuff, if you like the video games, if you like our sense of humor, be sure to go over there. Check it. Subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Let's me know you like what I'm doing. Also, give this video a thumbs up because OTA start on Monday. Rookie mini camp starts now. We re-signed Xavier and Howard. Everything is falling into place. I have trust in this front office. Finally, I have trust in this team. Give this video a thumbs up for that. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. We're a little over 100 subscribers away from 5K. When I hit 5K, I'm doing another giveaway. It's only been about two months since I hit 4K. Blowing my mind how crazy it is. I appreciate everyone who subscribed. I appreciate every single one of you. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I will see you guys Sunday with another video. Um, but other than that, like usual, stay classy. If it's up.